Double splashing, double dashing, double sailing on a sunny day. But the single most favorite double in the world is double good, double good, double mint gum. Double your pleasure with double mint gum. <laughs> Welcome back to 3D Aero Ventures. Thanks for tuning in. So what I've got here is my twin Super Chipmunk design. After the success of the original Super Chipmunk that I did a few months ago, I decided to do something a little bit unique and do a twin fuselage version, very similar to like a P82 twin Mustang. Um, this thing came out really nice. It's printed mostly out of LWPLA uh, with standard PLA and some ABS throughout just for rigidity in certain areas. So for some specs on this, the uh, original Super Chipmunk that I designed has a 64 inch wingspan. So putting these two together, um, I added about an 18 inch center wing. So the full wingspan on this is 82 inches. So this has to be one of the larger 3D printed models out there. The all up flying weight is a little over 5,700 grams. Um, but if you can tell, in such a large center wing, we've got tons of wing area. This thing actually floats pretty nice. It has some really gentle uh, slow flight characteristics, so landings with this thing are a breeze. Um, I'm running two 4860 motors by Leopard. They're 580 kV uh, on 4S batteries. So this pulls well over 6,000 grams of thrust. Um, so I'm getting a, a little bit over a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio on this. So really plenty of power. Honestly, one of the most gentle flying planes I've ever had. So that's about it for the specs of the aircraft. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let's get to the design, build, and flight video for this twin Super Chipmunk. Before we get to today's video, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our sponsor, SolidWorks, and a really exciting new product they're offering. This year, SolidWorks announced they're making their design software available to makers and hobbyists for personal projects for only $99 per year. At that price, 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers includes the latest version of SolidWorks Professional, which is the locally installed software that I use for all of my designs as well as their web-based software 3D Creator and 3D Sculptor. What's even better is, for my viewers, SolidWorks is providing a limited time 20% discount offer. Check out the link in the description below to sign up and start using one of the best computer-aided design tools on the planet. Thank you to SolidWorks for your sponsorship, and now, back to the video. I kicked off the design of the twin Super Chipmunk using the SolidWorks files from my original 1 6 scale Super Chipmunk design that I completed last year. But building this twin version wasn't as simple as just printing out two of each part and gluing them all together. There were several new design elements and engineering problems I needed to figure out. First of all, the landing gear needed to be repositioned. Its original position would be way too wide and would put too much stress on the outer wing panels, especially with a less than perfect landing. So I shifted the landing gear to sit in the center of each fuselage to better support the weight of the aircraft during taxiing, takeoff, and landing. And rather than removing the recess in the wing where the landing gear used to sit, I just designed a bolt-in plug to cover up the recess. This way, if I choose to in the future, I can use the same wing set for a standard Super Chipmunk model. I designed the landing gear to bolt in similar to the original design. With the landing gear done, I could then start spacing out the two fuselages and designing the center wing and center horizontal stabilizer. I decided to space the two fuselages about 18 inches apart. This would provide plenty of clearance for the two 14 inch propellers and give me a nice large center wing area. The center wing needed to be designed completely new, but most of the center horizontal stabilizer and elevator parts could just be copied over, with the exception of the very center pieces. Because the cross section of the center wing is so wide, the trailing edge needed to be printed as a separate part in order to fit on my printer's print bed. I continued the rib structure to match that of the outer wing panels, but I beefed up the two carbon fiber tubes that run through the center wing and fuselages to 10 millimeter diameter tubes. I could have designed the center wing and center horizontal stab to be removable for better portability of the model, but I was much more concerned about strength than portability. So I redesigned the wing root connection at the center wing and permanently glued the center wing and horizontal stabilizer in place using a 30 minute cure time epoxy. 
This, paired with the carbon fiber tubes that run through the wings and tail surfaces, made for a very strong model. The final major design change I made was to the thrust angle of the motors. Most single-engine RC aircraft have a few degrees of right thrust built into the motor mount in order to combat a few aerodynamic phenomena, known as P-factor and the spiraling slipstream caused by the rotating propeller. The P-factor effect is most notable at high angles of attack, like during takeoff. The downward sweeping blade of the propeller is at a much higher angle of attack than the upward sweeping blade, and with a higher angle of attack, the downward sweeping blade creates much more lift or thrust than the upward sweeping blade, making the airplane want to yaw to the left. Also during takeoff, the air accelerated behind the prop known as the slipstream follows a corkscrew pattern. As it wraps itself around the fuselage, it hits the left side of the aircraft's tail, creating a yawing motion and making the aircraft turn left. So a little bit of right thrust helps combat these effects. However, I've designed this twin chipmunk to use counter-rotating propellers, with each motor spinning the propeller in a different direction. When viewed from the rear of the aircraft or the cockpit, the left propeller rotates clockwise and the right propeller rotates counterclockwise. This setup pretty much negates the P-factor and spiraling slipstream phenomena, so as long as my thrust angles on the two motors are equal and opposite, I should have a nice flying aircraft. After some extra research, I settle on giving each motor a few degrees of outward thrust. With the CAD design complete, I proceeded to 3D print a ton of parts. Most of the components were printed using ColorFab's LWPLA for some major weight savings, but certain parts like the wing root connections and the gray fuselage tray parts shown in this image were printed out of standard PLA for added rigidity. As mentioned earlier, I was way more concerned with strength than portability with this design. So the center wing and horizontal stabilizer were permanently glued to the two fuselages, and I beefed up the carbon fiber tubes. There are 10 mm diameter carbon tubes throughout the whole length of the wing, and 6 mm diameter carbon fiber tubes throughout the horizontal stabilizer as well as both of the vertical stabilizers. So this thing is really strong. Most parts are glued together with super glue, but the center wing and horizontal stabilizer were glued together with 30 minute epoxy. The canopies are designed with a neat spring-loaded latch for access to the radio and battery compartments. One very unique thing about the Twin Chipmunks radio setup is I'm utilizing two receivers to control the aircraft, with one receiver in each fuselage. This was done for two reasons. First, with eight servos throughout the aircraft, I wanted each servo to have its own channel in order to eliminate the need for a bunch of Y harnesses and to give some extra programmability for each servo. Second, and more importantly, this setup gives me some redundancy in case of a receiver failure. You'll notice the elevator is split up into a center elevator and two outer elevators. Rather than all of the elevator surfaces being controlled by one receiver, I have the center elevator connected to one receiver and the two outer elevators connected to the other receiver. The left receiver controls the left rudder, aileron, and motor, and the right receiver controls the right rudder, aileron, and motor. So if one receiver fails, I have some built-in safety that should allow me to limp the aircraft home. With the twin Super Chipmunk assembled, set up, and given its initial paint job, I was ready for the maiden flight.
If you haven't noticed after watching some of my previous videos, I try to approach each new project as a learning experience, and I try to walk away from each project with a major lesson learned. But the lesson learned from this one has been difficult for me to put into words because so much was going on in the world while I was working on it, and it makes the project feel insignificant. I'm over here building toy airplanes while the world is dealing with a major health crisis, not to mention some other pretty heavy political and economic stuff. That made me feel pretty down until I remembered one of the most significant things I learned as an engineer. Focus on controlling the controllable. There's a ton we can't control in the world, but there is also a ton we can control when it comes to how we conduct ourselves and how we interact with those closest to us. So after clearer thinking, I realized there are a few things this project has taught me. First, we can't do much without the support of our family and friends. That feeling of support is contagious and it's only natural for us to strive to pay it forward to future generations. And second, we should ask ourselves the question, do my hobbies and passions make me a better person? If the answer is yes, I'd say that is pretty significant. Thanks for watching and as always I encourage you to never stop exploring, never stop questioning, and never stop playing.